All right, so what we have here is our uh, train station at our destination where we want to unload the fluids. In this case, it's oil. Um, and I want to set up some buffers because when a train station does a load or an unload action, uh, the train station will stop accepting or out inputting or outputting uh, product like oil or water. Um, so in this case, we will be um, using buffers so that when that operation happens, fluid will continue to be flowing uh, during uh, that operation. And then once that's finished, the buffers will get topped up again, as well as continuing to provide enough fluid to the running operations. Now, uh, I'm going to build it first and then we'll explain it uh, in another video some of the reasons behind how we do it all. So I'm just using myself for space reasons the standard fluid buffers. We don't need a lot of them. We need the output of the station and I'm just going to line up uh, line it up here about there and is it there is close enough. No, that's a little bit too close with the clipping the clipping police will come along and uh, no, it won't be allowed. But there is good and another one up there. And then you can just join the um, one output to there and one output to there. And make sure you put it on vertical so the OCD police don't come in and arrest you. Uh, then I put a, a pipeline junction here join that one there join that one there this will be our output coming here and I'm just for purposes of uh, to demonstrating stuff um, I will put I think this here and here and I'll explain that later but now all you have to do is just repeat that again you have the line here and it lines up with that and it lines up with that and it's very simple now you can see it actually isn't close enough so even i don't know how to build this very well but you'll get the gist of it and then you can get rid of that one and so forth but uh yeah uh and yeah just jump on top so the reason why i jump on top too if you unaware is if I try and put this here, I don't get the lines, but if I'm in the air, like so, then I can see the line and it makes it much easier to do it. So I'm going to continue to do that along here. I'm going to paint them black and then we're going to discuss the next part in a minute. Here we are again. Uh, I've got all the fluid buffers built along here that I was talking about. Uh, now, remember back to the previous uh, video where uh, we were putting oil into the train station and I discussed how we were delivering it. And that was uh, we were wanting to deliver uh, in total 600 oil and it was a 15 minute round trip which, which meant we need 9,000 oil in that whole time period. Each freight car transports 1600 fluid per minute uh, uh, sorry each freight, freight car transports 1600 meters cube of fluid so over 15 minutes we need to transport enough of that uh, enough freight cars of that to make that 9000 we need so six stations is what we need well 5.65 we can't do the 0.65 so we do six so what that means is we can get a hundred oil from each station each station gets a hundred oil per minute getting put into it and for it to last 15 minutes what do we need to do output a hundred oil per minute to our production lines how do we do that with the lovely use of our new update 3.6 fluid update valves the valves are here and I'll put a valve on the outgoing pipe And then I'm going to configure the output so it only outputs 100 per minute. 
Now, that'll go off to my rubber or my plastic or my fuel or whatever production lines, and I will combine it with other ones here. But what it means is that this one platform will only output 100 oil per minute, so it will last that 15 minute uh, round trend time instead of trying to force as much of it out as it can. The other thing I want to discuss is fluid buffers and why I'm doing this. So a train platform will cease outputting fluid when a load or an unload operation occurs on it. So when that happens, if you were just coming straight out of the platform and going to the, uh, um, the machines, uh, then the pipe will empty out and your machines will stop for a while and not work properly. Uh, and they'll have to wait until the operation continues and then off it goes. So you can put a fluid buffer in place so that this fluid buffer here um, will continue to be, uh, uh, it, it will have a storage of fluid up to 400 in these and, and then that gets output to your production line. So when the operation occurs, it will then start to drain out the fluid from the buffer. But when the freight operation has finished and fluid is allowed to flow again, um, the fluid prioritizes the output by going straight through. So if you, for instance, were drawing 300 oil out of this pipe, the buffer would never top up because it would always be being pulled out at the maximum speed. So the buffer would be rendered useless. So by putting two buffers in, you can draw out the maximum speed at this case, with two pipes of Mark 1, we can output from the station 600 into the buffers straight away and then join them back up again here. And now in my case, I'm only uh, outputting in my uh, valve to 100. But if the valve was set to 300, I'm guaranteed to get that 300 out and I'm guaranteed that the buffers will get topped up again because there is no way I'll be able to squeeze 600 out when I've got a 300 pipe. But I can get 300 out here and 300 out here into the buffers. And it's all about understanding that so that when the, uh, the load and unload operation occurs, that the, um, the fluid can continue to pass through. Now you could use the larger industrial buffers if you want. Go for your life, knock yourself out. I don't need that much space. I think in my operations, this is all you need. Uh, I believe that is all I wanted to say on that topic. So we'll leave it there. Otherwise, I'll come back and you'll hear my voice again.